to make that happen, we're, we're really, really proud and really glad to have Melissa Glassman here from New Belgium Brewery. I think we all are familiar with New Belgium, the other job they've done uh, from a branding perspective. And uh, she's kind enough to come out here and share her presentation with us. So with that, I will step out of the way and let you do that. Thank you. Should I use this? I think I will. Okay. Thank you. Um, so just so you know, if anybody's going to drink the bottles on the table, even though they have these custom labels, because that's part of my presentation, they're actually DIG. So if nobody's had our spring seasonal, DIG is what's in the bottles. And then you've got your Ranger and your fat tire, and I think you probably all evaluated it and decided you loved it, right? <laughs> so yeah, I hope everybody's familiar with um, New Belgium. Maybe some people don't know fat tire like Steve, um, but <laughs> that's our most well-known brand. We were started by a couple in Fort Collins in 91, a home brewer who is an electrical engineer by day and a social worker. And Kim Jordan continues to run the joint. And um, I have a better way of telling this story. It's a little bit dated, but it's a great video that was all created by my coworkers and written, and it's really fun. <laughs> When I first came to this town, there was no amber rails around. A fellow peddled in a Belgian hood and he thought of something good. And that ride would inspire a fat tire. And it was really something good and he did what he could. Not just booze, there's a siren and beer that calls out to freaks, geeks and engineers to vast contraptions, capture and steam and close the heat loop in a man-made machine and it grew and it grew and the workers owned it too Oh, and that was really something good and they did what they could Way back in 1998 New Belgium had a little debate Should they power the joint with coal or the wind? They gathered around and they voted it in. Hands up if you agree on it unanimously There was really something good And they did what they could Brew house to it gets mighty hot Yoga students, they pop, drop and they squat the burning kettle, it's got a plate Half the energy, that's all that it takes Water use is cut in half, so there's more for your bath Well, that's really something good And they did what they could From the rock is into the bottle And what goes down the drain Microbes feed on yeast and cows will get the grain They put a balloon over the water treatment station Combust the methane gas and power Could generation turn to waste in the fuel That's a powerful tool That was really something good And they did what they could Liquid Center, that's the name of the place People come from all over just to taste You should come on down, the beer's free to consume Have some fun with your chums in the tasting room Got a bike rent chair for your daily air We're wasting the fuel, that's a powerful tool Then turbines on towers turn wind into power Water use cut in half, so there's more for your bath Two skinny dipple, that'll buzz you like a triple Hands up, you agree on it unanimously All in like Flint, everybody voted win And the ride would inspire that tire It was really something good And they did what they could So, yeah, that was pre-HD days, so it's, it's a little dated. But, um, you know, it's such a fun story, and it is really something good. And I think the way they started this company has always just been amazing to me. I was in advertising for about 11 years before I started at New Belgium. Um, and I started there about five years ago. And, you know, I thought when I looked at, at how they were doing their creative, I thought, they've got a great agency, which, which we do, uh, and we still do. But I, I figured, this is a marketing spin, right? 
but it's not. Like, you get in there, and this is really the company portraying the company. I mean, those were all coworkers who wrote that, and they're all like, gave up profit sharing in 98 so that we could build wind turbines to power the place. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that happens there, and it's employee owned, and you get an ownership mentality. And, you know, Kim, I think she, she said it really well. She had these questions when she started it, and she said, you know, can a company create both profit and progress? Can a brand inspire more than a purchase? And can a culture become a social advocate? And so I just want to kind of dive into some of those questions through my presentation. And, and granted, that's a little heady for some hippies brewing beer in their basement, but um, <laughs> they did it anyways. And this is, um, as a creative director, you know, I'm out there trying to build a brand impression. And so this is the brand story that I want our consumers to feel. Again, it's a little bit heady, um, and so we break it down into really three main things. Beer, whimsy, sustainable. And what that does is it gives us a competitive advantage. It's the trifecta of those three things that we go out there and communicate with, because singularly, they're not distinct at all. I mean, if we're out there with beer, right now, craft is exploding, and I don't know if you guys I know there's some people from Portland, and <laughs> I don't even know how you choose beer because there's so much craft beer out there. There's 1,700 craft brewers, 200 are in the works this year. So you think about the expansion of how many beers are out in craft. We better have a really loud megaphone if the only thing we're talking about is beer and our product. Now, whimsy, you know, I mean, we're in the business of selling fun, and I was talking with Mike Lewis before this, and, and that's kind of the same with snowboarding. You're in the business of selling fun. That's not a hard sell to get people to want to drink beer. That's pretty easy, you know, and, and snowboarding's fun too. So we don't own that, but it's key to our message. And then fortunately, sustainable. And our practices sustainably are not completely unique either. There's a lot of people who do really great sustainable measures. Sierra Nevada um, has some really great things that they're doing with CO um, capturing. And so there's, there's some cool things happening, but we also tie in with sustainable how we run our company and being employee owned and being philanthropic. We give a dollar per barrel brewed and we've been doing that since the early 90s. We've given over $5 million to NPOs. And so by combining those three things, every time I go out there to message, I don't think anybody can own those like New Belgium. And so that gives us a competitive distinction. And how do we do that? Well, I think Tour de Fat is the best embodiment of this because it is literally, you know, beer, whimsy, and sustainable. And again, um, I'm going to play a video because it's a better way of, of explaining it. And it's such a visual event, you got to see it. <laughs> Uh, the Tour de Fat is our uh, way of taking New Belgium's love of bikes on the road and turning people on. We're throwing a big party in a park. 10,000 people probably came down today, all raising money for bike advocacy, drinking good beer. The wonderful thing about Tour de Fat is it pays for the not sexy things that happen at a bicycle advocacy organization. And a day like today is going to raise tens of thousands of dollars for local organizations that are going to further that cause. Our trainer today is Erin Vandenberg. She's a writer for Westward Magazine. She's given up her Ford Exploder and she's going to get on a bike for the next year. I like an adventure, but really I just, um, I hated my car. It's this gas guzzling beast and I kind of felt guilty driving it all the time. This person's car for bike trade inspires other people to ride their bike a little bit more and drive their car a little bit less. And I think it really turns people on to what New Belgium's all about, which is figuring out ways to have fun but reduce your footprint at the same time and enjoy life more. We're really trying hard to talk to people about sustainability because that reflects what the brewery is about and our event has become overwhelmingly sustainable. From the very beginning, it was about giving back to the local community. It was about giving back to people who have supported us as a company from early on and giving back to the cycling community. At the end of the day, I'd love it if people walked away knowing that they not only had a great day in the park drink a beer, but they, they, they furthered a cause that's going to benefit their community.
also, you know, I mean, for me, Tour de Fat does this amazing job of getting every touch point. It's a proprietary event. You know, we went from um, sponsorships, beer festivals. I mean, talk about undistinct. You go to a beer festival with 400 other brewers. Nobody knows what they're drinking or who they're talking to. And we just felt like, God, we have a bigger story to tell. And so this is an expensive endeavor for us. I mean, we pay nearly 80 grand per tour de fat. There's 15 different tour de fats. But at the end of the year, we've reached personally about 100,000 people with a message. They can't throw anything away. 98% land diversion. So sustainable is right there in their face. Somebody trades a car for a bike and says, I'm not going to drive for a year. Sustainable. Whimsy. Everybody's dressed up in costumes and running around. And then, of course, the beer is flowing like water. And so that doesn't hurt either. And so you're literally getting that whole brand message. And we get to control that by having it be ours. And then we give all the proceeds to a nonprofit. And we work with local bike advocacy. And they help tie that in. So you think about, you know, I know in snowboarding, events are huge for you. How do you own that event? How do you leave the mountain better than when you got there? How do you get the local community out there talking about it and inviting you and telling everyone? I mean, that's a huge part of it. So, you know, it's, uh, I, I talk about, um, so this is how much, the, you know, they, they get up and, and show how much they've raised. And then it's a show of appreciation to our fans uh, who came. And then I, I always was saying how it's a brand hug, I felt like, because it did that desired brand story. It had that beer whimsy and sustainable. So what the Carnies did, that's what we call the guys who work on the Tour de Fat, is they literally had this huge box that they made. And so at the end of the event, they wheeled it out and um, up came a huge head of Tony Danza and these big arms that are on like poles that they wrap around with these materials. So we're giving a whole hug and then there's a guy on stage singing, hold me close now, Tony Danza in Elton John wear. So, you know, not only do we give them a brand hug, we give them a Tony Danza hug at the end. And, uh, I, it, I think it's pretty funny. You kind of have to be there. <laughs> um, so that's how we do it at an event. How do we do it with a beer on the shelf where you're not there being able to message about it when you can't give uh, you know every touch point and it's literally a product sh sitting on the shelf? Well, let's talk about Ranger. So 2009, we had this big debate. We were probably the only craft brewer out there without an IPA. I mean, that was deliberate. We were Belgian brewers. IPA is a style that's not inherent to Belgium. And we have a Belgian brewmaster, and he prides himself on brewing to imagination, not style. He can't be constrained to style. So we had never done it, but then, you know, you got to watch trends. IPAs, growing, growing, growing. Oh, the fastest growing style in craft. Year after year, growing by 30%. Our rangers are out in the field and they're like, I am sucking wind because I'm going in and I do not have an IPA to offer from our portfolio. And we were like, all right, we got to do an IPA. Well, it's not unique. We're probably the last ones coming out there. How do you go out there with a beer like that and then make it competitively distinct? And so I'm struggling with what's this story going to be. I'm on a ride with a girlfriend, and I'm telling her, like, I don't even know what we're going to call this beer. I mean, there's no story behind it except that our rangers are crying for an IPA. And she says, what? And I said, oh, beer rangers. Beer rangers are our sales reps. And she kind of giggles, and she's like, oh, that's funny. I like that. And I was like, boom, there's the name. Nobody else has beer rangers. Only New Belgium does. Now, all of a sudden, we could go out there. They're our employee owners, right? That's part of our sustainable business story. Put them in a costume, um, because that's whimsy. And everybody tells me that my answer to anything is to put somebody in a costume, which I think that's OK. Um, and so put, dress them up. <laughs> And then name the beer after us. And then, of course, it's, a, it's an IPA, which is in this growing category. Did it work? Uh, yeah, it worked. Uh, when we came out with it, the launch, uh, 
February 1st of um, 2010 when we launched that. 2010, number one craft launch by a mile. I mean, we like, it, the bar graph was amazing. It continues to grow double digits. And the cool part, I think, for sales is that it localizes them. Because for us in craft, like I told you how big it's growing, our number one competition is local. And you think about the nature of craft beer. I mean, you go someplace, you want to drink what's local. I get it. So, and there's tons of local craft brewers. So that's our number one co competition. How do we compete locally? Well, we are local. We've got local beer rangers. We've got 120 beer rangers um, around the country that live there. So, you know, does is Ranger made in Chicago? No, but Tad Natwick, Ashley Thompson, and Brian Stamick live in Chicago, they've got a page, they message out locally to all their fans, and so we've got New Belgium Chicago. So we've got 30 different Facebook pages so that they can locally talk with them. And um, I'm sure there's an Idaho page, right? <laughs> and we've always featured rangers in the ads. Um, and you know, we launched with six packs and bombers, and then we came out with the 12 pack, and so these are 12 of our rangers. We have um, QR codes on everything, we have a special ranger site, we have videos. And you know, I think another thing that Mike and I had talked about is this employee engagement that we have. And how, how do you keep your employees so enthusiastic about it? And so I. Uh, I have a guinea pig here. <laughs> Jeff is our Idaho beer ranger, and he's only been with us for five months. And I thought, what better way to hear about what it's like to be a ranger and be engaged in our employee ownership than to have one come up and talk? <laughs> uh, just so you know, uh, I sell beer for a living and not do public speaking. So if this sucks, I apologize. <clears throat> but yeah, Melissa called me last week and asked if I would get up and talk, and I about crapped myself. I was down at the river swimming my dog, and really it was the last thing I wanted to do, but trying to step outside of myself and do things that are uncomfortable, because how, how else am I going to get better at these things without doing them? So here it goes. Uh, it, it's weird being here. I grew up. Uh, reading these magazines. Uh, I've been snowboarding for 20 years, uh, hearing people talk about squaw. You know, I work there. Um, so if you're mean to me, I will uh, start snowblading. So <laughs> go easy. Um, but yeah, so I started working at a local distributor in Boise about four and a half years ago. You know, heard all these stories of New Belgium, their uh, environmental practices. You know, of course, I drank all the beer, amazing beer, um, went to the Tour de Fats. Um, so I had a, what I thought a good understanding of what the company represented. And, you know, smash cut to five months ago, getting hired with the company, going to the brewery, going through orientation, meeting everybody. I mean, it's the nicest group of people you ever meet. You're meeting people for the first time. They're hugging you, um, high fives. Uh, you see the uh, water tri treatment facility there on uh, the grounds there at the brewery. Um, you're walking through the offices. There's, you know, uh, sun, tubes. sun tubes everywhere, you know, to reduce the lighting being used. Um, all the love that goes into making the beer. And, you know, you walk away from that with a real sense of, wow, these people really do what they say. And... They're not full of it, and you really just get a sense of pride in that, and it makes me just want to go out and really do a kick-ass bang-up job for them. Um, you know, just the employee ownership after uh, aspect of the business, uh, which is I'm practicing for right now, believe it or not. Uh, they do powwows twice a year. We do powwows twice a year. I'm really having trouble saying we and not they, but um, so yeah, just super proud to be a part of the company. They really inspire me to be want to be better and go out there and just do an amazing job for the company. I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> and aside from the Twin Falls Airport, 
I'm sure you're doing a great job. <laughs> I got beer from 2010 Fat Tire at the Twin Falls Airport. It's not his fault. I bought it all, quality control. Um, so, here's a Ranger. Whoa, free cruiser bikes for three. Who should I give them to? Tickles and Trust Fund. Cool. Shut up! Oh, Get your chains greased up, it's about to go down! Everybody in the place, check your tire pressure, but stay on your motherfucking bike! We riding this, let's go! I'm on a bike, I'm on a bike, everybody look at me cause I'm riding on a bike! I'm on a bike, I'm on a bike, take a good hard look at the motherfucking bike! I'm on a bike, mother. Take a look at me, straight cruising mountain ab in the FTC. I started rolling young and hard on my Fisher trike. New Belgium gangster represent on my cruiser bike. Take a picture trick, I'm on a bike, bitch. I'm drinking sunshine mixed with that skinny dip. I got my boots on, but I ain't going hiking. We sipping Belgian beers, cause we're at the movie biking. I'm riding old town, leaving skin marks and shit. Giving high fives, drinking all the mothership with There ain't no traffic jams This is real as it gets I'm on a bike, motherfucker Don't you ever forget I'm on a bike and it's going fast And it's getting bumpy And I've been losing fat cams I'm the king of the world On my bike like lads We're talking tour to fat This ain't no tour to France Drink the f*** up This bike is real Screw cops, I'm on a bike here, suckers. Here, suckers. Get on the gas, wasting cash, mother truckers. The drinking of the Lee always makes me pop the cake. The spades and the spokes makes no mother. Hey, ma, if you could see me now, see me now. riding to the Belgium with my bell ringing loud. Bell ringing loud. Gotta fly this bike to the moon somehow. Moon somehow. Like Elliot from ET, anything is possible. Yeah, I'm never gonna be on a bike. It's a two-wheel pivot device. Yeah, Da Vinci, look at me. Oh, I never thought I'd see the day with a big bike coming my way. Believe me when I say I wanna cruise a bike today. I wanna bike. I wanna bike. Everybody, look at me. It's new, it's fun, it's really easy to get behind. What happens when you've got a 20 year old brand that is starting to plateau? How do you reinvigorate that? So for us, our 20 year anniversary, fat tire, you know, huge percentage of our sales. We need to reinvigorate this thing, so what did we do? We took it on a joy ride. And what we did is we literally took the bike off of every piece of packaging, all labels, all six packs, all 12 packs, everything. There was no bike on anything because the bike went on a joy ride. And this was a way to, you know, reintroduce this brand that was 20 years old. Get people to stop, get people to talk. What's going on here? And talk is what we wanted them to do because we wanted to collect their fat tire stories. And I think, if anything, the brand Fat Tire has this unique ability for people to conjure up a memory. They either, the first time they had it, or they have some kind of memory that they associate with Fat Tire, and we've heard it, you know, I know Jeff hears it in the field, and we're like, we need to collect these. So the bike went on a joyride, collected all these stories last year with the intention of that we would use the stories this year. Um, so now this year, everybody gets to enjoy the ride with these stories that are going out. So that's why um, Jeff and I were literally glue sticking on those labels. So those are gonna be actual labels that will come out this summer with our Enjoy the Ride campaign. They're all um, consumer authored. We had 30,000 people come online and either share their story written. Um, they could also uh, call, so I'm gonna play some of those. They could come to the brewery. 
there was a photo booth so you could get in there and then all the rangers had little fat tire flip cameras so that they were collecting stories video so we have all this amazing content and when i say amazing tell me this is not I could not script this, it's so amazing. So this is a voicemail. Granted, you put an 800 number on a bottle, you're asking for drunk, drunk, dunk, dot, see? Well done. Right, right? <laughs> drunk dialing, drunk dialing. Um, so yeah, we knew we were setting ourselves up for drunk dialing, which is why we put a 60 second limit on the voicemail. So when they called in, and check out this one. Oh, how about that for a setup and let down? Um, Nevea. My name is Nevea, and I'm from Pennsylvania. While I was down in Georgia visiting with my cousin, we decided to hit the town. We went to a bar that had a wall of beers. There was a beer that stuck out, and I thought it said Fat Tree. So I ordered one, and I fell in love. Well, the kid sitting next to me had just turned 21, and needless to say, I'm older, and I took him to places he'd never been before and probably will never be again. I'm very proud of myself for that little moment in history, well, at least in his history. So I wanted to thank Fat Tire for bringing me and Joshua together. Of course, I haven't seen him since because I had to move back home to Pennsylvania. I couldn't stay there forever. And besides, I was old enough to be his mom. Okay, that's my story. Right? Okay, I mean, the cougar contingent is healthy in the fat tire realm. And so, like, you can imagine us in the creative department when that voicemail comes through and we're like, she didn't freaking just say that, really wait. I mean, I have listened to this no less than 100 times and I'm always just like, wow. And you, when you're laughing, you don't hear that she's talking about, like, changing his life, you know? And I'm, I'm wondering, like, Joshua... Is he like in a corner somewhere? Like, what's his side of the story? Because, <laughs> you know. And then the funny part is, so we're using her story, and I'm not sure how we're going to use it on the website, but we call her, guess what? Her name isn't Nevea, it's Patty. <laughs> Nevea's the cougar name, I guess, when she goes out. Um, so then, th this is hysterical, and actually, you got to listen qu closely because it's the guy in the background that's really funny. And wow. yeah, me and Nate Jones, we had us a couple uh, drafts of fat tire down at the Demolition Derby here in Griggsville, Illinois. Shit right there. Demolition Derby, we wreck cars and break into bars. Yeah, we do. And anyway, we're looking for a new bicycle. We got this old man in our town. He's a bicycle lover, and he hugs on every light pole to take a breather and roll him up a cigarette, top back of him. And yeah, like I said, we've been here, down here, we've been That's watching. Robert? Yeah, but his name's Gary Robert. We've been watching uh, a demolition derby. Yeah, wreck cars and breaking the bars. Fat tire bicycle. We're wanting to change your tire in the mind. We love you. Greg's a little annoyed. Me and Nate Jones. Laid back swerving like a Nate Jones. What up, G? <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty good stuff, huh? And then I wanted to read a couple labels, too. Um, Cindy, are you ready? <laughs> 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 
And so we've got 24 stories that we're going to put on um, labels, and then we're going to do a whole website dedicated to these stories. I will have post coasters out in market. This next one is my favorite. This is Grambo on her 85th birthday, right? And so, you know, the most amazing part about this for me is, you know, I've got cougars in Georgia. I've got mother stay-at-home moms of twins. I've got Nate Jones in Greensville, Illinois. I've got Grambo in California. <laughs> Who's our demographic, right? I mean, that's pretty impressive, is when you go out there and you get this kind of content back and you say, wow, we're reaching a lot more people, and I think that's because we have a message that resonates across the board, and it's not demographic specific. And so this will be a really fun campaign. You guys will have to look for it. And then what I did is, because I kept talking to a few people around here about our new beer launch, and I wasn't going to talk about it, but then I was like, you know what? You guys, you guys are this total market. So you know, speak to your audience. Um, and, you know, going after the Red Bull Paps, not really, Target, but kind of. Um, so <laughs> um, we're launching this April 2nd, and we are putting a huge effort behind it. It's called Shift. And, and again, we're, we're pulling in an employee's story. We, um, you know, obviously work in shifts to brew beer. We brew beer 24 hours a day and package it. Um, so there's a lot of shift workers. And so at the end of your shift, you go and pour your own shift beer. And it's a pretty cool process. And, I, and, I, and I've always heard employees talk about this, that they really felt like an owner when they go into the tasting room kind of for the first time and are asking one of the tasting room employees, hey, can I get a beer? And they say, you're an owner. You get back here and pour your own beer. This is your place too. And they go back behind the bar and they pour their own shift beer. And it's just this ceremony that... From day one, you belong here, and you're a part owner of this. And you think about the difference and how that feels as an employee. So Shift is in honor of our Shift workers and a Shift beer. And what do they pour most of the time? A lighter beer, a nice, easy-drinking beer. You know, we make amazing sour beers and dark beers and high-alcohol beers. We have 17 different beers on tap at any given time. And they'll go over and they'll pull a Blue Paddle Pilsner. You know, and, the, and so we said, we need to do a shift beer that is exactly that beer that we all want to drink at the end of our shift. Um, and these slides I just put together before this presentation, and so um, you can't really, they're not as good. But this is going to be the print ad that will launch. It's going to be on the back cover of Rolling Stone in April. Um, and I love the line, finish your shift, start another. Um, and, you know, it's, it, you can pick up multiple shifts. <laughs> Okay, um, there's plenty of puns. I've done a lot of puns on this one. We're going to do a whole Pandora station um, and then also do a lot of advertising on Pandora, uh, which will, you know, let me play the audio if I can get to it. Where's my mouse? There we go. Who's Pandora? Li who listens to Pandora? Right? I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, I think uh, when we, we've looked into it. Although I do have to say there are a lot of shitty ads on Pandora. So we're, we're upgrading it a little bit now. Sounds like somebody just finished their shift. Perfect time for another. Introducing Shift Pale Lager. 16 ounces of a job well done. Shift Gears at NewBelgium.com. And that... Yep, only tall boys, 16 ounce can only, even on premise, so it's not gonna be in draft at all. So that's gonna be a just, uh, I think for Jeff, he could speak to that, it's more of a competitive offering. You're always fighting for the draft tower, there's only so many handles there. So by saying, hey, this is a can only, and it's like its own POS, our point of sale, walking through the bar in the can. Um, and that was an employee who was featured there, was a maintenance guy and he has this great deep voice. So we continue to do that um, and, and use our employees all over. This is gonna be some, we're doing a lot more digital with this launch, so this will be kind of a fun digital uh, banner that'll show up. And um, we're launching a mobile app. So we're gonna have a mobile app that's all New Belgium, but we're gonna launch it with Shift. You can set your shift beer time, and then when you clock out, it'll post to Facebook or Twitter that you're clocking out, you're having your shift beer. So it's going to be really fun. So be on the lookout. That's literally in two weeks. You'll see it on shelves. 
And then we're going to launch into more mobile with um, Ranger apps and Joyride, because you think about that. I mean, that, we all know. I mean, who here has a smartphone? Who here loves their phone? Do you know they've done these surveys where it's like people like have more affection for their phones than other people? Like people feel so connected to their phone and I, I could see that. So, you know, we want to get in on some of that love. Um, so we're going to do a lot more mobile and it's a great way to also find our beer because we can geo-target. You can show exactly where our beer is and we have all that information and drive them right there. Um, and so I'll just end, you know, I, I guess with the beer whimsy sustainable that's pretty specific to New Belgium so I thought well let me give you some words of wisdom that can be applied to any brand that really we embrace and these are them and it starts with walk before talk and I think Jeff even even touched on that is that he worked at a distributor and he heard about it he heard about all these things and then you go in there and you're like holy shit it's true and you know You've really got to do that if you're going to do sustainable measures as well. You have to get it down internally before you go out. Because with this internet armed group that we have and consumers out there, they're going to find out. So you better be doing what you're saying. And this is kind of supplemental to that. Omit the flaws because they're going to find out. And, and, and a good example of this is we used to have 100% wind powered on our packaging. And somebody called us out pretty publicly that, hey, you've got gas coming into that building. You're using natural gas. You're not 100% wind powered. We're like, you are absolutely right. And we went out publicly and said they're right. And we need to rephrase that. And we changed packaging and we pulled and we said, we're wind powered, but just electrically, not you know, through gas. So I think admitting that actually gave us more credit than like, well, yeah, but technically, and arguing it, no, go out there. Um, and then, you know, this really speaks to the, the move towards social media. I mean, we're moving from commercials to conversations. What's more social than beer? You know, people love to talk about beer. And when we launched with Facebook a few, you know, pretty, it's been probably four, a little over four years, we were one of the early adopters. And, it, I think it's having conversations with your consumers too. It's not just, here's our new seasonal beer, here's a promotion, here's an event. It's not just pushing that, and I know you guys know this, but it's having those conversations. And I use the example that one of the funniest posts I thought is we were trying to decide on a t-shirt for Tour de Fat, and I posted V-necks for men, yes or no. And I could not believe how strongly people feel about that. And I mean, thousands of response of how, you know, who should be wearing V-necks? Apparently this guy, right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but what does that have to do with beer? Well, we're giving them something else. We're not just talking product. Um, thanks, thanks. And that wasn't even planted. Nice work. Um, and then go with soul. And you guys all know about that. Snowboarding has a very deep soul. And I think you go out there with your soul very well. And remain true to that. Because that's what, that's what inspires passion. And that's what's going to be held true. Um, let me see if I have it. I, I'm sure I have something wise to say about that. Oh, it's, we did this uh, ad this year, which was really kind of bearing that as well. Um, if you can't see it, this is an employee owner, and she works in our sustainability department. But it says, here's me, here's the brewery I own, and here's the bike to prove it. And the copy is, on your first anniversary at New Belgium Brewing, you get a shiny new cruiser employee ownership. It comes with a feeling of trust, empowerment, and the desire to do what's right. Together, we have decided that minimizing our environmental impact, contributing to our community, and encouraging the growth of each other is the right path for us. We call it alternatively empowered, and it peddles us all. So we've really adopted this alternatively empowered, actually, to move away from wind power and talk more about everything we're doing. So I showed this ad, you know, uh, oftentimes I'm out in market visits, which requires me to go to a lot of bars. You know, I have to do this. And so I'm sitting there, and here's this, like, ex-military type guy sitting next to me, and he's offering the free advice that I just crave. And so I show him this ad to get his 
you know, reaction to it. And he reads it. And he's like, for a brewery, you guys worry about the funniest stuff. I was like, yeah. He's like, but you know what? It's nice to know you're worrying about something besides quarterly profits. Makes me like you, even if you are a bunch of hippies. You know, and so I think it, you know, it, it's weird to go out with an ad that says something that feels kind of like that, but people want to hear that and they want to know that you're doing something more. And then the final is make ripple, ripples. And in my mind, you know, everything we're doing has that ripple effect. And it comes back to those questions about, you know, can, can a company create both profit and progress? Well, I think for the past 20 years, we've been trying to do that. And can a brand inspire more than a purchase? Um, I think a lot of people are riding bikes more and, uh, you know, drinking more Ranger. And can a cultural, culture become a social advocate? You tell me. So that's all I have. I wanted to just end, of course, with one more video. Oh, oh, yeah, no, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one more video. This is TV that we did a few years ago, and um, it's true to us. We did it in a different format, and and I. Aw, uh, should we group hug now? <laughs> okay. So I'm sure uh, we probably have a few questions for you. Um, I'll just start with, did you get any sad voicemails about drinking your beer? Like maybe, hey, Fat Tire, I like your beer so much, I started drinking a lot of it. And I started being late for work. And I got fired. So I drank more of it, and then I crashed my car, and the state took my kids away. Did you have any of those? We did have a label, which we tried to go to print with, and the TTB didn't let us. And it was about a gal who loved Fat Tire and then got on a s tire swing while drinking Fat Tire, then broke her ankle and drank Fat Tire during her entire recovery. And now, with Fat Tire, she's going to get back on the tire swing. Oh, so it's a yeah. kind of, so kind of kind a nice of story. Good, but it was like, yeah. By the way, I think I have a version of what that guy Josh's one would have left. The guy who was on the other end of the cougar scenario. I'll share that later at the bar. I think I know what he would have said. All right, who's got some questions? Rocks here. Hey! <laughs> just dad, ranger, and a mic. That's all it takes. I'm just curious how many voicemails you got and also how many stories you got. Oh, gosh. Um, I, had, I have those numbers in another presentation, but... If I can kind of PFA it, this is a term that we use at my office all the time, PFA, pulled from ass. It works all the time with numbers. But like 6,800 labels, a couple, maybe around 2,000 voicemails. Um, what else? Oh, the photo booth, we had like 12,000 because that was people who were coming into the brewery and they could go in the photo booth and then videos. So it totaled about 30,000 of all the different ways that people could share. Really? I think okay. I just got unplugged. <laughs> no. I have a I'll question over here. I'll play it for you later. Right but you know what? He'll be on the website this summer, and you can come, and if you download our mobile app, I'm going to put him on there, too. Oh, wait. Do you have
All right. Hey, I have, a, I have a question about the Ranger program, actually. Just your process in which you you uh, sought these people out, and are these people actually employees? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay. all beer rangers. They're all our sales staff. Okay. Like so Jeff. full-time full employees? Yes. Yes. So, you know, I mean, I don't want to get into the logistics of it, but we have a three-tier system in beer. So we actually can't sell direct ex except in Fort Collins we can. So we have to sell through distributors. And then you think about if that distributor has a couple hundred craft breweries in their house, as we call them, how much focus are you going to get, right? So by hiring people like Jeff, our beer rangers, what they really do is they work with the distributor to maintain focus on our brands, to help give them the point of sale, to help do promotions and things like that. So while they're salespeople, they can't really go in and sell. Does that make sense? So they work with the distributors. And I mean, you can definitely tell the markets where we have rangers, the difference where we don't have rangers. Quick question here. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about your employee ownership program. I'm over here. Sorry, right I know. I'm Sorry. Like, where are you? Right here. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if you can elaborate a little bit on exactly how does that work. I've heard bits and pieces of it. I'm not sure which parts are myth, legends, or lies. So if you could elaborate on the employee ownership and how that works. OK. Um, no. <laughs> now, my husband gives me so much grief for this because I really don't understand it. But um, what it basically, can you explain it? At one year, you start getting shares. So 39% of the company is um, employees that work there who have been there for a year. And then you get shares of the company. Um, then there's a management group that has a little bit more shares. And then 51% is still Kim and her sons. So you're vested after like seven years. I mean, I know that's not what you wanted, but it's like it's more of that part of it. So it's just a share model. It's not really a decision-making model. Like oh, literally all decisions are is. run through every single employee of the company? Absolutely. We have all staff meetings every month. They bring to those meetings questions, and you have to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if there's, you know, majority, um, but if there's people with thumbs down, they need to explain. And people listen to them. So there's also open book management. So all our financials are published on our inter interweb. And so you can go on there and you can see anything financially. And so everything's transparent in that and anything that we're doing. But because we are still privately owned, we don't go public with any of those numbers. But all the employees. And then there's profit sharing as well. Hey, but, Yeah. I was just going to say real quick, and that's one of the things I've been most impressed about with the company is that they actually do take what we say into consideration. I mean, she was just asking me back here about what I thought about some graphics on some t-shirts that have yet to come out. And I know that she's taken what I'm saying into consideration yeah, that's a 100%. Big I mean, the fact that she asked me to come out here and talk is just kind of weird, you know, being with the company only for four months. But yeah, I mean, it. We really do have a say in what goes on in the business, believe it or not. Yeah, and you know, people talk about that. You, you start there on day one, and you get a key card to this entire production facility. And you can go in there and, you know, do whatever you want, but there's trust, and there's all of that that comes. Look at that public speaking working out for you, by the way, huh? You're jumping right back in. I like that. This is more just kind of a thought as you're talking about your shift beer over here. I had a little epiphany for you guys and take it for what it's worth. But with your shift beer, I thought it might be cool since you guys like to be unique and different. Maybe come out with a nine pack and call it time and a half. Nice. Nice. Over time. I'll write that one down. Over time. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Anyone else? I think we're about. Oh, we got more. Oh, come on. Was there a correlation between I know. No. California, Pennsylvania. We'll get Kelly Davis on that immediately. We'll crunch those numbers, see if we can find out. I know. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, anything else? Good. Yeah, sure. You mentioned on the Facebook, I was. I might be confused, but you said like people in Chicago have a Facebook page that's New Belgium. So like somebody like, you know, someone from us, 
how could we do that? It's like we have this many fans, but I mean, we would get so much more leverage if those fans could create their own Sun Valley page. So then when they come to Sun Valley, they could create their own page. It's like, how could we pretty much piggyback that? Well, so what we did is it's all Ranger manned. And so they, they do the pages, but we have a map on our website and on Facebook. So if you click on the map, you click to where you're closest and it'll pop up the page that you should like that's nearest to you. So it's, a, it's an activated map like that. And then with those QR codes that are on all the Ranger packaging, what happens is it geotargets you and it immediately directs you to the local Facebook page. And so that's how it's like find your Ranger. And so anytime you click on find your Ranger, it'll take you to that page. And then what we'll do is on the New Belgium main page, since there's more fans there, we'll highlight things now and then like, hey, people you know, in Western Washington, here, you should fan this page and get local information. So whenever we do that, and they've even run some Facebook ads directing people towards them, and, and then they, their fan likes go up. Right. 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 And I think that would go back to employee ownership. You know, you bring people in there and you say, hey, we're giving you the power to message about this brand. And, and I mean, I trust Jeff. He would, I've, you can tell that he loves the brand. He's going to say the right thing. And then we've got rangers that are going to write on, on a bike. And I still think that's funny. And some people might think that's inappropriate. But we're in beer. You know, so I think you get a little bit more, you can have more liberties. Everything has to be legal drinking age for you to like it. So you're talking to a little bit older audience, too. But we say, you know, we talk to rangers about, um, you know, when you're at a promo, <laughs> don't get shit-faced, you know, that shift-faced. Huh? But um, anyways, uh, you know, don't do that because, you know, poor form. And then we say, also think about Facebook is like, if you're at, if you're having a conversation and somebody's eavesdropping and you don't really want them to hear, this is like 200,000 people eavesdropping on your conversation. Make sure it's something you would want them to hear, right? All right, well, thank you very much. Don't go far, so. All right, check out what we're gonna try to do now. This is gonna be the engagement part that I was promising for a while. Now everyone's got a bunch of beers in them. We're gonna to try to totally rearrange the room. This sounded like a good idea on paper, I guess, at some point. Um, we're gonna shift into the roundtable discussions, and they're gonna focus on engaging the next generation. And I've heard everyone talking on the side about how important the whole youth mo movement was, and, and talking and getting this new generation engaged in, in our brands and our sport. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and